What's up everyone, Kevin from Epic Gardening here, here with Martin Nowinski of EcoLife Conservation, awesome nonprofit. You can see we're hanging out here in a pretty epic aquaponic system. Something that I really like, but just something that I'm much less experienced in than, than Martin is. And so he's designed a really cool system with kind of like an evolution of some of the concepts of aquaponics. So I thought what I would do is take you through a system, or Martin will take you through a system that's producing tons of cucumbers, tons of greens. I think you said you harvested 480 pounds or something like that a couple yeah, weeks ago. 492 in the past four weeks. 492 pounds of, of produce in the last two weeks from a relatively small footprint. I mean, no. you can't do this in soil. No. So I'm gonna hop behind the camera. We're gonna have Martin drop some knowledge on you guys. Okay, we are here at the fish tank where it kind of all begins, right? So this is the fish tank and here we have uh, tilapia, which is a, probably the most common fish in aquaponics because they're super easy to take care of. Um, they're just survival machines. Uh, they grow really quickly. And uh, so the fish make waste and the waste has a bottom drain in here. It goes over here. So in these two, in these two filters, these are where we have solids removal. So we're removing all of the solid waste from the fish. We want to get that out of the system as fast as possible so it doesn't clog up our roots or create anaerobic zones in our system. Once we remove the solid waste, we, we move to our biofilter. Um, our biofilter is filled with the, this little uh, biomedia where we have a lot of little nooks and crannies for, um, for the bacteria to live on. And we have a bunch of aeration in that tank. So um, we're creating an ideal space for bacteria to flourish in there. And in an aquaponic system, that's crucial because you can't just use the fish waste right away. Right, because the, the fish are producing ammonia, which is really toxic for them. We don't want that to build up in the system. It's just like a fish tank. Um, the same process is happening in a fish tank and, and the bacteria will convert the ammonia into nitrate, which is a nitrogen fertilizer that the plants can take up. So from our biofilter here, the plants go into our cucumbers and they go through the tomatoes and then the two beds are connected down there um, and it comes back through the lettuce and back over the fish tank. So total recirculating system. Totally. One connected big loop. Yep. just going continuously. Yep. And then you've got some interesting things because I think with aquaponics, a lot of people say, well, the, the solid waste, what, what happens with the solid waste? That's an output of the system, right? Right. But in your case, it's actually not. Yeah, so we're, <clears throat> this system is extremely efficient. So n no water and no uh, fish waste are flushed from the system. So everything stays in the system until either the nutrients are used up by the plants or the water is taken up by the plants. Um, so with our fish waste, with our solids, we have these three tanks, which are aerated, and uh, we're aerating the waste there. And so we're, the, the waste, we're creating an environment for heterotrophic bacteria and microorganisms and fungi. And those microorganisms are just eating the solid waste and breaking it down into ionic form so that plants can take it up. Um, so first thing when I do when I come off, when I come here in the morning is I turn the air off in these two tanks and I let all the solids settle down to the bottom. And when, after a couple hours, I go ahead and I'll open the valve on this tank where the solids have been aerating for the longest mm -hmm. period of time, so it's about 40 days. I'll open up a valve here. Okay, so we can see this valve right here. Uh, the that one is, right below it. The one right here, yep. it starts to flow down. It's gonna flow down through this pipe. Okay. And it's gonna come out here. Oh wow. You can see how clean that is. That's almost crystal clear. And just to show you guys where it starts, it does not start that way. That is quite murky water because you've got a lot of, of fish waste there. And then over here, it's hard to get a good look, but believe me when I say there are millions upon millions of tiny little microorganisms that you can actually see some with the naked eye floating around, converting a lot of that fish waste into, into nutrition for, for the plants. Yeah, they're very small, but you can see that waste is really alive. And then this is our final product. And this, this water is clear, but it's full of nutrients. And so I can open up this valve here, and this valve goes straight back into the grow bed. So um, I'll go ahead and let off all that clean water, and then I'll start to move water from tank to tank do that process over a couple times. So I know I know in aquaponics, one of the, not necessarily a huge downside, but one of the things to watch out for is you're getting a lot of nitrates, but sometimes you're not getting a lot of the other minerals and nutrients that plants need. Yep. And this seems to solve that problem because you're extracting them from the solid waste. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, the majority of this, the, the nutrients in 
fish waste is going to be in the solids. So yeah. when we break these down, we get uh, much higher levels of calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium, and we get a, a good dose of the micronutrients as well. Awesome. Cool. And so basically this is like your little fertilizer boost for the, yeah, the aquaponics there's about, we, uh, We've done uh, fertilizer, uh, full spectrum nutrient tests on this, and we have about four to five times the nutrients uh, in the in the clear water I just showed you versus the water that's in the normal system. Yeah, and that that's already nutrient rich water from the aquaponics main principle. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's really it's really effective, and it, you get uh, much much better. The plants are just getting more of what they need. Yeah. Um, so let's, which is really important when you have all these fruit. I was about to say. Yeah. Let's let's talk about some of the stuff that you've got going on because I remember last time I was here. There weren't as many fruiting plants, and now we're walking on a literal jungle of cucumbers. I mean, you can look up, and I mean, these are beautiful, beautiful cucumbers, and there's got to be hundreds of these up, up here. Yeah, we, um, on today's Thursday, uh, two days ago, we did uh, 89 pounds of cucumbers in a day. <laughs> and, uh, and at Ecolife, you guys send this out to food banks and, and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so um, we have a couple partners. Uh, so there's Interfood uh, Food Bank here in Escondido. Uh, we just partnered with Meals on Wheels, and they're coming every Tuesday to, to pick up and provide uh, food to seniors. Um, and then we uh, have Produce for Patriots, um, which which uh, provides food as well, so they come pick up. Um, so all the food is donated. Yeah. Yeah. Anything special that, that someone would have to consider when they're doing something like a cucumber or tomatoes as we go see these in an aquaponic system? Um, potassium. Yeah. Potassium is really important. Uh, the nutrient profile of aquaponics is more nitrogen rich um, so without additional potassium you're just not going to get the you'll, you can get some fruit but you're not going to get the amount of fruit you want yeah um, it's important to have uh, ample amounts of potassium because these plants are hungry I mean they yeah they're taking up the nutrients about as fast as I can put them in so. yeah they're going wild so we have a couple different kinds of tomatoes here look at this have some nice this fruit set is incredible guys it's nice picture cherries. perfect and then we have we have some uh, Kind of medium-sized heirlooms. Oh there. my gosh! Yeah, these are amazing. Wow. Anything um, you're doing special as far as the training? I know you've got the tomato clips going on. Yeah. So um, on the cucumbers and the tomatoes, um, I'm removing the suckers, uh, so we keep everything kind of going in a vertical plane. On yep. the cucumbers, um, once they get out onto the trellis here, I'm letting I'm letting the suckers go to create more plant mass. Um, on the tomatoes here, we're doing a, a lean and lower method. So mm. plants grow up here. They grow up to the top of this uh, spool here. Yep. And when they hit the top, I kind of let them down a notch. And then you move the main stem down, right? And then and then I just I let this go. Um, when I'm back here in a few days, it'll have hit the top again, and I'll let it down again. Yeah. And then uh, we're training down. We're taking off the branches up to the first set of fruit here okay and as the fruit gets harvested we'll continue to do that and shorten yeah. the plant um, last year when we did tomatoes this this we finished this system in August of uh, 2018 and uh, so last year we had some tomatoes um, which I took out in the beginning of this year just because they were getting older and uh, the, the vine was 16 foot Wow just just the vine so yeah. I think we're gonna break that this year. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I've seen the lower and lean at my friend Steven's farm. Okay. Nature's always right, but he does it yeah. in soil. And the, just the, the rapid growth rate you get with the aquaponics or the hydroponic system, you get the, the main stem sort of wrapping like crazy, yeah, we right? Yeah, start wrapping around. Yeah. We don't, our trellis, trellis here isn't quite, isn't good for really a, a lean method. We're kind of doing more of a drop and, Just straight. A drop and curl method. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, but it, but it definitely works. And uh, we're growing, we're growing tomatoes a little tight this year, um, but so far so good. Yeah, yeah, guys, just to, to show you how that method works, you've got your main stem that he's, it's an indeterminate variety, right? Right. That you've right. pruned down to one main stem, and as soon as it reaches the top, you don't want it to go more than that because you don't have trellis support for that, so you just spool it down, and then you can see here's maybe a couple feet worth of vertical growth that's just lying horizontal, and that's how he's managing all of these tomatoes because, like he said, he's growing them quite densely, and a similar-ish principle for the cucumbers, except for as soon as the cucumbers get to here, there's some extra trellis material that they're laying flat over and creating this nice little shaded cucumber dungeon that's going on over here, which just looks really awesome. Yeah, and these are, and we're getting exceptional growth rate in aquaponics because they have access uh, to all the water and nutrients they need all the time. So these, these tomatoes are two and a half uh, months old. 
Wow, that's insane. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like I always think about hydroponics or aquaponics as like the movie Wall-E, where all the the people are just getting fed right to their face and they're sitting on a couch and then they become fat and happy. But with, with the plants, that's actually a good thing. With us, maybe not yeah. so much. I mean, sometimes it, it can be too fast too. I'm I'm uh, I am seeing uh, calcium issues here and there, mm. um, and I think that's just from from the growth coming up a little too quick. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, overall, it's looking. Overall, though, I'm very happy with the. We're starting to get our first, first like splash of color here. Oh, so, there you go. Yeah, I can't wait for these guys. To come in. Oh, that's gonna be amazing. Let's get a better look at those guys. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's so nice to see that much fruit set on these guys. As a gardener in soil who's battling with all sorts of weird diseases right now, it's definitely some jealousy going on. <laughs> Guys, it's getting super hot in here. We turned all the fans off to actually have good audio for this, so hopefully it was good, but I just want to give you a really quick rundown of an aquaponic system at scale. Martin Nowinski, the master of it over at Ecolife Conservation. So if you guys like this, let me know if you have any questions. I definitely am really interested in setting up an aquaponic system at my house. I've done it in the past, just I don't have it at my current property, and I would love to figure out how to scale something like this down to the home gardener level. So. Anyways, let me know, and if you guys want to check out anything that Martin or Ecolife is up to, I'm going to leave it all in the description. But until next time, good luck in the garden, keep growing, and I think we need to turn these fans on because I'm, I'm dying in here. <laughs>